Hello guys and welcome back to Phoenix Wright, Ace Attorney, Justice for All. In the last episode, if you don't remember, we went ahead and we started cross-examining Will Powers and we learned that he saw uh, the killer multiple times throughout the course of the night of the murder. And we're going to be learning about the second time that he saw him. Uh, so without further ado, let's jump right into this. That was a really quick intro. This time I was in that hallway because I had to go to the bathroom. And that's when that bellboy I saw earlier came out of the room. Of course, when I say room, I mean Juan Corita's room. Now that I think about it, that bellboy did seem kind of out of place. Yeah, so we had to be at the assassin. I'm sure of it. I mean... Just not gonna finish that thought? Okay. Thank you very much. That is all we need for now. Huh? Oh, he got cut off by Edgeworth. But I'm not done. There's still more... Let us first establish that the bellboy was truly Mr. DeKiller. Then we shall see... Hmm. So the bellboy came out of the victim's room. And if that bellboy really was the assassin, then I think the answer is fairly obvious. That would be correct, Your Honor. Well, Mr. Wright, I believe it's your turn to entertain us and make us laugh. Heh. 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 This is no laughing matter. Okay, cross-examination time. This one is thankfully a bit easier than the last testimony. And what time was it? Aw, oh, well, I don't remember. The award ceremony ends around 8pm, right? And I went to Matt's room pretty soon after that. And then I came back. <sighs> and then I went to the bathroom. So I guess maybe it was around 8-10pm by that time. You're not one for details, are you, Mr. Powers? Sorry, I thought I could maybe catch Matt and say my congrats. And that's when that bellboy I saw earlier came out of the room. Are you sure it was the same bellboy? Yeah, and how could you tell? All the bellboys wear the same uniform after all. But you see, well he had those stitches in his face. <sighs> so I'm sure it's the same guy I it was talking so I'm sure it was the same guy that was talking with Matt. Hmm. So which room did the bellboy come out of? Of course when I say room, I mean Juan Corita's room. The victim's room, huh? Yeah, the one with all the really pretty flowers and teddy bears. It was Juan's room, alright. Words cannot describe how screwed I am. <laughs> Hmph. Let's continue with the testimony, shall we? Now that I think about it, that bellboy did seem kind of out of place. Um, so what exactly was so out of place about him? Right, right, right. Right, right, right. Why the insipid grin? Maybe because I have no idea what damaging thing he's going to say next. Oh, um, well that bellboy was empty-handed. Empty-handed? That bellboy was one of those room service people, right? But he wasn't pushing a card and he wasn't holding a tray either. You'd call that a little strange too, wouldn't you? Hmm. I agree that it is a bit strange, Mr. Powers. But is it really that unusual for a bellboy to be empty-handed? What should I do? Should I let Mr. Powers' testimony slide, or... Let's try to pull a fast one. There's nothing strange or unusual about an empty-handed bellboy. But there really, really is! There really, really isn't! If you two are done being school children. Bellboys are for room service. There's no reason for them to be empty-handed, ever. Your Honor, I ask that the witness's previous statement be supplanted with this new one. Ugh, Edgeworth. Are you going to do whatever you can to make the bellboy look suspicious? I see. Very well. This court recognizes and grants the prosecution's request. Mr. Powers, if you could amend your testimony, please. Y yes, sir. I thought it was kind of strange for a bellboy to come out of a guest room's guest's room em empty-handed. So you're saying that it's suspicious for him to be empty-handed? Yeah, really su suspicious. I mean, when I first saw that bellboy... He was holding a tray in his hand, and there was a bottle of juice and a wine glass on it. Juice? What kind of juice was it? Um, I'm pretty sure it was tomato juice. If we could come up with some sort of reason as to why he would come out empty-handed. 
some sort of proof, then I think we could dodge the bullet on this one for now. Proof, huh? Sounds like another job for the court record. Yeah, so he had to be at the assassin. I'm sure of it. Please don't be so quick to, du to judge. Well, but it's kind of a Powers family thing. To think of every person as a thief. <laughs> well, I guess a thief and an assassin are both sneaky and silent. That's not the point, Phoenix. In any case, if that bellboy was the assassin, it would be very bad for us. But he really is the assassin, you know? Yes, but you can't give in yet. If you want to prolong this trial for as long as possible, you're going to have to pull some cheap tricks on this one. So, cheap tricks. Uh, you need to suppress the fourth statement and try to pull a fast one. That'll bring us this new statement right here about it's strange for a bellboy to come out of the guest room, guest's room empty-handed. But, there was one weird piece of evidence from the previous court day. The, where is it? The wine glass. This was the thing where it's like, oh, why did Adrian Andrews pour this glass of juice? Oh, it's because I was dazed, and or I didn't know that he was dead, but he's obviously dead because he had a knife sticking out of him. It was a whole confusing thing, so we're going to try this out and see if it works. Mr. Powers. Y yes You're easily influenced by other people's words, aren't you? As soon as you heard that bellboy might have been the killer, you got caught up in believing it must be true. But, but, isn't he really suspicious? He's got all those stitches and, and... So, a baseball has stitches. Are you saying all baseballs are suspicious because they have stitches? Well, there's also... I mean, what about him being empty-handed? I would like to ask the court to please take a look here. This is the crime scene. There is a wine glass sitting next to Mr. Corita's body. The liquid inside this glass is tomato juice. And now, if you would look at what is on top of the table in the lower right corner here... Anyone can clearly see that it was a tray with a bottle of tomato juice on it. The bellboy had just brought this to Mr. Corita's room. He left the tray in the room, which is why he was empty-handed when he left. Oh, but, but, that would mean that the bellboy had seen and left a dead body in the room. Ah, but can you prove that Mr. Corita was already dead at the time? Uh, m m Mr. Edgeworth. Yes, I blame you for leading me down this route. <laughs> I'm terribly sorry. What is with him? Why is he laughing? Witness, isn't there one more thing you would like to share with us? Is there? The bellboy was empty-handed. Or should I say empty-handed? I recall you had something interesting to say about his hands. Oh yeah, I almost forgot. Huh? What? That bellboy. He was wearing gloves. Gloves? Yeah, pitch black leather ones. All the other bellboys don't wear gloves like that, right? Black leather gloves. Why didn't you mention them earlier? S sorry, it slipped my mind. Ugh. Oh, does that make the bellboy look really suspicious? Alright, gotta focus. Can't I can't get lax here. So what if he had gloves? A lot of bellboys wear gloves. Come on, Mr. Wright. That bellboy was wearing black leather ones. So, a football is made of leather. Are you saying all footballs are suspicious because they are made of leather? Well... But that man, he received a large roll of cash from the defendant, and then he was seen leaving the crime scene wearing black leather gloves. I don't think that even someone like myself can believe that he was just another bellboy. Ugh. It seems that we have finally come to an understanding. Now then, witness, please continue with the rest of your testimony. The rest? Oh yes, please tell us more. Okay. After leaving Juan's room, the bellboy went and knocked on Matt's door just like that. He gave, he gave something to the person inside the room. Then the old guy just left without even going into the room. After that, I went to the bathroom and then back to my seat. So the bellboy, after leaving the crime scene, next went to the defendant's room. 
Yeah, I kind of saw all that by accident. Some accident? I'd say you saw too much. And all of it was suspicious. To high heaven. Hmm. I think it's safe to say that we can no longer consider the bellboy to be normal. Now then, let's get started, shall we? Mr. Wright, your cross-examination, please. Y yes, your honor. Okay, I think... I think this is also a super weird one where you have to do some weird pressing. So let's go ahead and just press around for a bit. And then... Is that what you saw while... You is that what you saw when you were busy spying? It, excuse me? I may be a poor underpaid action star, but even I wouldn't stoop to spying. Well, I think the point is where did you watch all this from, Mr. Powers? Oh, um, from the door of the bathroom with my left eye and a sort of sneaking, sneaky spy-like. I knew he was spying. Please, does it really matter if he was doing it over or underhandedly? What did, these bell what did the bellboy do next? That's all I care to know. He gave me so he gave something to the person inside the room. I said hold it. Um okay. That's better. <clears throat> what kind of statement is that? Please elaborate and give us a few more details. You can tell Phoenix is just completely running out of things to say and is just panicking. Oh um okay. Hmm. I should probably ask him only one question at a time. Let's first ask about the person inside. So who took this something the bellboy handed off? Um, actually, I don't know. What do you mean? I'm sorry, but I only saw the person's arm. Only an arm? Then you're saying you didn't see the person's face? Yeah. Well, it was Mr. Engard's room, correct? So it could have only been Mr. Engard himself, I'd say. And then, what did the bellboy do after that? Oh, well, after you gave the person inside the room the thing... And then the old guy just left without even going into the room. Where did this bellboy go after he left Mr. Ungard's room? Hmm, he opened the door to Vi Viola Hall. Went in there and who knows what after that, right? Ugh, I do. Went to the bathroom, then back to my seat. Did you see anything strange, suspicious, or just out of the ordinary at the time? Oh yeah, I saw that one thing. What? You saw something else? There was this jittery alien with a ray gun. It was, uh, it was watching Juan's door like some sort of stalker. Um, I think we can forget about the alien. Well, Mr. Powers' testimony just now is just as vague as his first. It's a little troublesome, isn't it? But I'm sure if you press him enough, everything will become clearer. Although, that just makes it harder on us, doesn't it? Ugh, talk about a lose-lose situation. Alright, so, now that we've gone through all of these statements, statement two here. Uh, previously we pressed it, and we asked about the person inside. Uh, he said he, saw, he only saw the arm, but it was Mr. Engard's room, so... It's probably Mr. Engard. Now we're gonna press him again. I said hold it! Now we're gonna ask about this something. He gave something to this person? Yeah! And what was this something? <laughs> if I remembered what it was, I wouldn't be calling it a something now, would I? But this implies that something was removed from the scene of the crime. Are you sure you can't really can't remember, Mr. Powers? Um, I think it was something kinda small. I would like to summarize the testimony up to this point, if you don't mind. When the bellboy left the crime scene, he immediately went to the defendant's room. There, he handed a small item of some sort to a person inside. As for the person who received this item, you, all you could see was this person's arm. Yes, yes, it was just like that. Mr. Edgeworth, is all this really that important? Of course, Your Honor. I think this is all of the utmost importance. This is when whatever was removed from the crime scene was handed over to the client. Hmm. Mr. Powers, please try to remember what it was that Bellboy handed off. Um, uh, well, let's see. Hmm. I think it was... No. If you remember, please add it to your testimony. Y yes, sir. 
I saw it again, I could say for sure, but I think it was some sort of wooden statue. Well, we know it's not the thinker that he's talking about. So if we had to guess, it was probably something like this figurine here. A wooden bear-shaped figurine. What was the point of that pregnant pause? Where did that objection come from? Well, speak up. Uh, it was me, Your Honor. What is it, Phoenix? I have a feeling that something bad is going to happen once I show this. Mr. Wright, if you have something to say, please spit it out. Y yes Your Honor. Okay, Phoenix. Deep breath. <sighs> Mr. Powers, the something you saw. Was it this item? Oh, hey, that's it. That's the something. Wow, Mr. Wright, you really figured it out. Hmm, I recall we found this at Matt on God's Mansion. At the defendant's house? What does this mean? It's simple, Your Honor. Shelley the Killer assassinated one Corita in his room, and then he stole this wooden bear from the scene of the crime. Then the bear being found at Mr. Rengard's mansion would mean... It goes without saying, Your Honor. Mr. Matt on guard is the killer's client! Order, order, order! I said order! Mr. Wright, this is a most unfortunate turn of events for you. Yeah... Sorry, Mia. No, it's alright. Your judgement was sound. Actually, I figured the bear would come up. If not now, then it would have later on. Even if you hadn't shown it to the court, I'm sure your friend Edgeworth would have. Ah, I almost forgot that he knew about it, too. Hmm. I think that it is clear there is no need for us to continue this trial. I... I can't let this happen. I have to do something. There has to be something we've overlooked. Your Honor, a minute, please. Y yes, Mr. Wright? There's still a few points left that we have not fully explored. What are you trying to pull? Oh? Well, we can't have that. All right, Mr. Wright, what questionable point would you like to explore further? That questionable point is something we'll have to explore in the next episode. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you guys next time. Goodbye!